Hello everyone, I am Siddhartham. Currently we are in the second module of our deep learning course and in this second module we are discussing about mathematics for deep learning. The previous video was about vectors and how vectors are used in deep learning and in this video let's understand about some of the important vector operations and how do we use that in deep learning. So that will be the agenda for today's video. So before getting started, please consider subscribing to my channel if my content is helpful to you. Also check out my channel membership to get early access for all of my course videos and other videos related to machine learning and deep learning. So let's get started with today's video. So these are the four vector operations that we will be discussing today. So we have vector addition, vector subtraction, dot product and cross product. So let's understand about each of these operations individually and also how these are used in deep learning. Apart from this we also have some other uh, vector operations which will be covered in the subsequent video. So first let's discuss about this vector addition. So we know that a vector is a mathematical entity that has both magnitude and direction and in the concept of or in the domain of deep learning we use this vector specifically for data representation, manipulation, calculations and so on right. So involved with uh, how you represent the input data, weights, bias and so on. So in those contexts the uh, operations such as vector addition and vector subtraction are like really important. So let's say that we have two coordinate axes. So x1 and x2, you can think about uh, these also as like, let's say two features in your input data. So let's say that you have, uh, you know, age and the gender of a person and you want to train a diabetes prediction model. So something like that. So that would represent the features and here we have the features of x1 and x2. And now let's say we have this first vector of 2 comma 3 and the second vector of 3 comma minus 2. So these are the coordinates of these two vectors. So we represent this vector with arrows, so which we already know. So this, let's say the coordinate for this particular uh, vector is 2, 3, and for this one is 3 comma minus 2. Now we need to add this vector. So there are like two approaches to uh, do this one is we can uh, kind of uh, add this like in, in an algebraic way, which would be this. So we have this two, 2 and 3 as the first matrix and the second matrix is 3 and minus 2. So it's nothing but when you do a vector addition, you just do a elemental wise addition. So you have this 2 and 3, right? So you add this 2 plus 3 and you have 3 and minus 2. So you have these two things. So the final result that you are going to get is 5 and 1. So the final resultant vector or the addition of these two vectors is 5 comma 1. Okay. And the main aspect of this vector addition is that if you add two vectors, it should have the same uh, kind of like dimension. So it, this particular vector is in two dimension. So let's say this x1 and x2 are the two dimensions that we have. So if, if let's say there is another dimension of x3, then the other vector that you are going to add should also have like kind of three dimensions. So you cannot add like a vector with two dimension and a vector with three dimensions. So that's not possible. So that's one thing. And the other important aspect of this vector addition is when you add add two vectors the resultant is always going to be a vector as well so that's something you can remember so this is how you can uh, do vector addition which is basically like uh, you know elemental wise addition you can also do this in this graph so what you would do is let's say that we have these two vectors you just draw a dotted line from this vector and a dotted line from this vector so find this point of intersection and if you find this coordinate right so that's going to be 5 comma 1 so the same uh, you know result that we are getting but in in terms of deep learning right so this is like uh, more you know convenient because like we can't uh, keep drawing these vectors in an higher dimensional space and calculate this so we can just follow this where let's say you have uh, uh, input data where there are 10 dimensions so you can add like another uh, you know vector with the 10 dimensions and get a result so this is about vector addition and this is mainly used in the concept of deep learning right so we have this weighted sum so in in each perceptron so we would do this weighted uh, you know some where you multiply the weight uh, weight and the input data and then you add this bias right so this addition of uh, weighted sum when i say weighted sum it's nothing but the product of weight as well as this uh, you know input data so that you add that to a bias vector so that's where we kind of use this vector addition maybe i can write this uh, down so that you can you know remember this so let's say that we have this w which is nothing but a weight vector so it can have like any weight depending upon the neural network so you uh, kind of do a dot product of weight and all the input data so let's say you have 10 input features so you would uh, multiply or do a dot product of the 10 weights and the 10 input features so plus you would uh, you know add a bias 
vector to this so this addition is basically a vector addition so this is where this vector addition is used and the dot product is used here which we will discuss here and, and in these cases uh, you know vector addition is helpful and also in the case of gradient calculation so we kind of add this gradients in order to get this overall uh, gradient thing so that we can optimize our model so this vector addition is used internally in those process of calculating this gradients as well so this is about uh, vector addition now let's understand about vector subtraction so this is also similar to the vector addition where you can just do a elemental uh, you know subtraction so let's say that we have again two vectors of 2 comma 3 and 3 comma minus 2 and you just uh, kind of subtract it so you have 2 3 and 3 and minus 2 so you have to subtract it so 2 minus 3 and 3 minus of minus 2 so we have minus 2 here right so we have 3 minus of minus 2 so this would become a plus so the result is minus 1 and 5 so this is how you can do a subtraction just like elemental uh, subtraction again same concepts apply here so you can only uh, subtract vectors of same dimensions and the resultant is always going to be a vector 2 so how you can do this is we are subtracting the second vector from the first vector right so we have to invert this vector in this graph so when you invert it this is what you would get so that uh, basically is nothing but you know minus 3 comma plus 2 so when you invert this so it will be in this particular axis right so the x-axis is in the negative thing so you have minus 3 and y-axis in the positive uh, area so plus 2 so you are just inverting this and now you just draw a dotted line similar to the previous case that we have seen so when you do this dotted line and, and you kind of draw a vector here so you would get minus 1 comma 5 right so this is how you can calculate this uh, vector subtraction in the graph okay again these are used in this weighted something and, and other you know calculus calculations also this vector subtraction will be used so i hope everyone is clear until this point now let's move on to the important operation of dot product so let's say that we have this again x1 and x2 uh, coordinates or the dimensions uh, and then we have this vector of 2 comma 3 and 4 comma 4 so now we have to find the dot product for this so what we do in dot product is and other uh, main thing here is when you do a dot product of two vector you are going to get a scalar so this is like very important so please remember this one so a dot product of two vectors is going to be a scalar so we have 2 comma 3 4 comma 4 so this is represented by this dot the dot product thing so again you have to multiply this element wise so this first two will be multiplied with this four and this second uh, this this three will be multiplied with this four and these two things will be added so if i just you know try to draw this thing so this 2 and 4 will be uh, multiplied and this 3 and 4 will be multiplied and these two things will be added so that's what we have here okay so we have this uh, you know multiplication of 2 and 4 is here and this 3 and 4 is here and we are like adding it so when you do this the result is going to be 20 so we have 2 4 which is 8 and 3 4 uh, which is 12 so we are going to get the result as 20 so this is how you can get the you know value of dot product there is another way to calculate this dot product so again this method so this is what we call as a algebraic method and there is another method of geometric method so there what we would do is so here we would have an angle for this angle between these two things right so there would be an angle let's call this as theta now uh, you have this formula of uh, the dot product of let's say this is an a vector and this is the b vector so the dot product is magnitude of a into magnitude of b into cosine of theta so that's what we call as uh, you know the uh, you know the geometrical aspect of finding the dot product again that would also the value will be closer to 20 but in in deep learning we won't prefer using that because again it's hard or, or i would say it's like an overhead to kind of find all these uh you know angles and the magnitudes and all the dimensions and calculate this so instead when you have like let's say 100 features you can just do a dot product of this thing and, and get this so again as i said this is used in the case of uh, you know weighted sum where we do a dot product of weight and the input feature so that is where this concept of dot product is used okay and then we finally come to this cross product so we let's say we have this two coordinate axes of x1 and x2 and we have vectors 2 comma 3 and 4 comma 4 and now we have to do a cross product so let's say that there is another dimension but uh, you know the third dimension is zero because we don't do the cross products in uh, two dimensions so it's not applicable there so the minimum requirement is it should be a uh, you know three dimensional space so let's say that there is another uh, axis called as 6 3 but i mean here i'm not representing this just for simplicity but let's say that we have two vectors so we have the vector a and the vector b so vector a is 2 3 and 0 
uh, you can think about this coordinate axis as x1 x2 x3 or i j k or like whatever like the three coordinates and b is equal to let's say 4 4 and 0 so here the cross product of a into b so dot product is represented as a dot b but cross product is represented as a cross b or like a into b so this cross product is calculated as the determinant so we have to write this as uh, write this in determinant so we have this i j k think about this as the three coordinates that we have coordinate axis that we have and first you need to write the first vector and then the second vector so we have 2 3 and 0 so that's what we have written here and then we have this 4 4 and 0 and this is like a simple determinant uh, calculation so i hope you know this so first we take this i and then you have to multiply this thing so when you take this i right so you need to ignore this uh, line that or basically the column of i and the row of i so you have to ignore this i row and i column multiply this 3 with 0 subtract it with 0 into 4 so that's what we have here minus of j and here we are, again you have to ignore the column of j and uh, the row of j so the second thing the j would start with minus so that's why we have a minus here so here we have 2 into 0 minus 4 into 0 which is uh, here and then k again we have to ignore this line so it would be 2 into 4 minus 3 uh, into 4 so this is what we are getting again this is simple determinant calculation and uh, when we do the simplification this is what we would get i of 0 minus j of 0 plus k of minus 4 and the final result is minus 4 because the two other coordinates would get a 0 so minus 4k and the other interesting thing about cross product is when you have two vectors and you do a cross product the resultant is always going to be a you know vector as well so uh, you know apart, contrast to the dot product where you would get a scalar in the case of cross product you would get a vector and uh, this cross product right so you have two vectors a and b and the resultant vector that you get is going to be perpendicular to the two vectors that you have so you, let's let's call this a c vector which is the cross product of a and b so c vector is going to be perpendicular to this a as well as b so that's like another uh, feature so again cross product is i mean not uh, that extensively or like you know openly used in deep learning so it is like used in some of the cases of this 3d samples and stuff but i mean it's not used that much so uh, you know maybe you can uh, you know remember that but you know vector addition and this dot product uh, like used a lot so i hope everyone is clear until this point where uh, dot the vector addition and vector subtraction are nothing but the elemental uh, you know addition of element wise addition of the two vectors and you would get a resultant vector uh, which is used in this addition of this bias vector with the weighted uh, sum and then you have this vector subtraction where we would just invert one vector and just you know do this elemental wise uh, calculation thing and then you have this dot product where the main thing about this is the dot product the result of a dot product of two vectors is going to be a scalar and then finally you have cross product so i hope everyone is clear until this point so in the next video let's understand about some more uh, you know vector operations or we can also try all these things so we have vector addition vector subtraction and uh, dot product and cross product we can try uh, executing this in python to get like a more clear understanding and then we can move on to the other vector operations so once we are clear with vectors we can uh, discuss about matrices and the other matrix operation which are like very important in the case of deep learning so i hope everyone is clear and i'll see you in the next upload thanks for watching